Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The reason, the reason why I sing, the reason why I sing is because of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God this morning. I, I thank God for Jesus. He's the reason why we sing. He, he said he, he, he's our, our strength in a storm. He's our prince of peace. He's the lily in the valley. He's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning and end. He's Jesus. He is our Savior. He's our Lord. Glory be to God this morning. I thank God for Jesus this morning. I, I bless God for each and every one of you guys this morning. That all the born again of believers around the world. Uh, if I'm hitting you right there, but uh, especially to those believers that are part of this body of Christ that are chiming in this morning. I bless God for each and every one of you guys. And I, I just thank you for this opportunity to be able to stand once again. For truly it's, it's by the grace of God and uh, his mercy that we're yet here. Uh, we thank God for this opportunity because the word of God said is by him, is, is him that makes us live, moving our very existence. So this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I bless God this morning for each and every mother around the world. I thank God for you guys because truly it is a blessing to be a mother. Uh, we bless God for each and every one of you mothers that are, uh, that are looking in and those that are celebrating with mothers today. We, we bless God for that opportunity because truly it is a gift to be a mother because uh, everybody's not able to have children. So we thank God for that gift. So, so today we thank God just for having mothers today. We bless him for that blessing that he's given us by giving us mothers. And we just bless all the sisters and brothers in Christ this morning. We thank God for another opportunity to stand and proclaim the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I bless God for each and every uh, part of a uh, member of this particular body of Christ, born again believers ministry. I bless God for each and every one of them, from the smallest to the greatest. I mean, even from the smallest baby that's a part of this ministry, all the way to the elder of the church. We just bless God for each and every one of you guys for being faithful, even through what we've been going through. I thank God for Born Again Believers Ministry. You guys have been faithful and all that God has put you in ministry. Each and every one of you guys has been faithful to the ministry. You've been standing in Christ. Uh, all my calls throughout the week when I make up, everybody has been blessed to be well and be blessed to have food and be blessed to have a roof over their head and and, and, and all of us are going through the same thing. So I just bless God for allowing us to have a body of Christ that's sticking together. And oh, it blessed my heart when I call one and they said, well, I talked to Brother such and such yesterday. Oh, I talked to him. It just blessed my heart as a pastor to know that, that the ministry that God has given us to, 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 to work in, that everybody's checking on everybody and everybody's seeing after each other. That's what the household of faith should do. The household of faith should nobody in your ministry want for nothing or need for nothing, even if it's just an encouraging word. The body of Christ should always be there to just say, God bless you or whatever it is. Hallelujah. So I just bless God for this opportunity to just be in ministry. And it is it's truly the labor of, uh, uh, it, it's my labor of love for me because I thank God for being able to reach out to lost souls and not only that, to, to be able to uh, 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 impute the word of God within the body of believers that they may be strengthened from day to day. So I just bless God today. And we thank God for this opportunity today to share a word. So, good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you will, and I know you do, have your weapons with you. Your word, your sword, which is your word. Uh, if you will, go with me to Galatians 5 this morning. Galatians 5 this morning. I bless God for each and every one of you guys. I, I can't say how much I thank God for you and how much I pray for the body of Christ and all the believers 
even those that have been chiming in on Facebook, or on YouTube. I just bless God for you, and I thank God for you, and I pray for you constantly that God will continue to keep his hands upon you as we're going through this difficult time for many. And, uh, and, 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 and we understand that it's something that none of us ever seen before in our lives. And probably would never see something like this again until Jesus come back. Amen. Amen. But I pray that we gone, the body of believers will be gone before, uh, before anything else happens too bad. But we just thank God for, for this opportunity to share in ministry. And we just bless God for you. If you go with me to the, the uh, epistle to, uh, to the Galatians church, uh, chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Y'all been dealing with me through the scripture all week and different areas. But early in the week, he placed it in my heart through the scripture. Galatians 5, if you're there with me. Galatians 5, if you're there with me. The scripture read thusly. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. If you're not standing in Christ, you'll fall. For anything. If you're not standing in Christ, you got to make sure you put that in Christ, you'll fall for anything. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for this opportunity that you have blessed us again, Lord God, to stand before your people today, Lord God, and proclaim the gospel, the good news, the good news of salvation that came only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you for this opportunity, oh God, to to just share a word, Lord God, on your behalf. Lord God, we pray today that spiritual ears will be open and spiritual eyes will be open, Lord God, that we may hear your word and that we may even be able to see what you're saying to the church right now. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Now, give me strength, oh God, to stand and preach your gospel. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. 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 The Apostle Paul speaking to the church saying stand fast therefore in the liberty in the freedom wherewith Christ had made us free. So, so he's saying that he has made us free. And then he said and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I come by to tell you today that if you're not standing in Christ, and I say standing in Christ, I ain't saying standing next to him, I didn't say standing by him, I say standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. Well, why do you say that, Pastor? Because Paul said, stand steadfast, therefore, in the liberty of where Christ had made us free. We're free in Christ through what Christ did up on Calvary. Now you want to say free from what, Pastor? Well, let's go on and look at what the scripture is saying. And we got other scripture we're going to look at too. But just hear what Paul is telling the, the church. Now this is the body of believers. Now keep this in mind. When we're preaching and teaching the word, we're talking to the body of believers we talking to those ones that say they have been born again of the Spirit. Amen? And, 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 and being led by Holy Spirit. So when Paul or Peter and all the other apostles are speaking to the uh, these churches, they're talking to the body of believers. And when Pastor Cromwell is talking, he's talking to the body of believers or those who are believing 
in Christ for salvation, and not only those, but those that might just be listening in that aren't saved yet. So, so we got to understand that this word is going to the body of believers. And he said, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Bondage means being, being, being tied up or being enslaved or being held to something. Uh, and, and it said that, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Pay attention now. See, circumcision was a, 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 a was a part of the Jewish ritual of that to let you know that they were Jews. But when Christ came the, to the body of believers, Paul is letting them know now. Okay, you were circumcised under the law, but right now that don't that don't uh, don't mean nothing to you anymore. By you being circumcised, that. That don't make you more holy than nobody else. Paul is telling them that now that circumcision really could be bondage for you because you still walk around saying, well, I've been circumcised uh, under Abraham's covenant and, uh, and I, I, I'm a Jew. And I, Now Paul is telling you now that, that stand there for in the freedom that Christ has given you. In other words, the circumcision don't mean nothing anymore. Now, now, now don't get me wrong. For that time, before Christ came, they were in that type bondage. But see, Christ came and Christ gave us freedom. Christ came to give us liberty. So let, let us pay attention to what he said. He said, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So what am I saying to the body of believers today? I'm saying to me, to the body of believers today, if you're doing anything in yourself to say that you're keeping any kind of law for your salvation, then you are in bondage. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. See, Creed said that Paul told him, say, look, if you're circumcised, then if you've been circumcised, then, then Christ shall profit you nothing. He said, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. In other words, just because you did the circumcision, that don't mean that you completed the law. That means that you got to do everything that the law said. Everything that the law said. If we as the body of believers want to say that we are born again believers, but we yet trying to stay with a certain law, then we can't say we're born again. But what are you saying, Pastor? Well, he said, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Here it is. Christ is come, it's become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are falling from grace. That's a term that has been misused from I don't know how many times I have heard this being used in the wrong context. People want to say, well, he, he done left the church, he done fell from grace. That's a lie. Oh, he done started back drinking. He fell from grace. That's a lie. That ain't what the scripture's saying. The scripture's saying if you're trying to keep the law and say that you are saved, then you fell from grace. Because we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did up on Calvary. We're not saved by the law. We're not saved by works. We're saved through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing that you can add to it. And if you do, then the cross is not a thing. If you add anything unto the cross of Christ, then the cross is not a thing. If you say you're saved because you stopped drinking, then the cross is not a thing. If you say you're saved because you go to church every Sunday, and that's the only way, then the cross is not a thing. Paul is telling them that what you're doing under the law is no good no more. We're saved by grace. We're saved by grace. And if we add any kind of words and say, this is why I'm going to heaven, or this is why I have salvation, then you have fallen from grace. We have been justified through what Christ 
nothing. And when he raised Christ from the grave, you will justify. Those of you that say that you're born again believers, the law is no good to you. Well, I, I'm a, I got to do this and I got to do that. Well, if you're doing all that and you're saying you say, then, it, 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 then the cross is not effect to you. Paul is trying to tell him is that Christ came to give us salvation. It was nothing that we did to deserve salvation. Uh, 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 there was nothing that you can do to win salvation. There's no work that you can do to offer to God that will give you salvation. We have been justified through what Christ did on Calvary. Trying to help the born again believer today, to try to help the born again believer to, to understand when you fall short, don't mean that Christ got to be died again and then be raised again. No, when you fall short, you get to fail to that old nature. And, and this is what it, this is what Paul is telling him. Look, if you're trying to, to continue to walk around and say you're saved or you have Christ because you've been circumcised, then that make the cross to none effect. Warning. If anything you're doing as the body of believers to say this is why I'm going to heaven other than what Christ had done upon Calvary, then you're falling from grace. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. If, 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 if you can't tell a person that you're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary, if you can't tell them that's it, that's done, then guess what? You'll fall for anything. If you're not standing in Christ. See, we died with Christ. We were risen with Christ. It's not me that live anymore. Now I live unto Christ. I'm going to show you scripture in a minute. Pay attention. Pay attention. Go to John. The gospel of John. The gospel of John. The God, oh man, I've been in this all week. Been in this all week. The Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. And this is, John was the forerunner. John, I mean John, not that John, but this John is coming. And he's speaking. The one who Jesus loved. And he said in this particular verse, which is, which is, which is, which is his power in this because the same thing Paul is trying to tell them in, in, in the book of Galatians, Jesus was already setting this up in the Gospels. And John is said in John 1, John 1, the Gospel of John 1, around by the 17th verse. Pay attention, guys. Around by the 17th verse. For the body of believers today, if you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. It said, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, around about the 17th verse. Pay attention. Pay attention. Because we really need to see this. As the body of believers and all of us to grow in grace and all of us to continue to walk in Christ in order to, for us to get strengthened as the body of believers to move on and be able to stand and stand in Christ and really truly get the blessing that he has for us. We have got to understand that we are saved by grace. Through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. We really, really, we really need to get that. We really need to get that. But for some particular reason, we always want to try to add something to it. And when you add something to it, then you're falling from grace. Amen. Here it is. I'm going to show you both of these in one sentence in the Gospel of John. It said in the Gospel of John, around about the 17th verse, he said, For the law was given by Moses. He said, For the law was given by Moses. Pay attention. The law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. I have to say that three or four times so we can understand that. That, 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 that. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Those that are born again believers are under grace by what Jesus 
Jesus Christ did up on Calvary. We can't continue to mix the law up with grace. Uh, the law was to show you sin. The law was to show the transgression of the people. But grace came when Christ went up on that cross. Oftentimes we'll find churches and bodies of believers continue to hold the law over the newborn believer. But then he can't hold that law over the newborn believer. Because the law, uh, uh, Moses gave the law, but Jesus uh, uh, gave us grace and truth. Saved by grace through faith of what Christ did upon Calvary. See, see, when you say law, then you say it works. You might as well go and say works. You can say law or you can say works. See, see, the law was trying to keep from doing certain things. You working in. But see, we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. I just come out and tell the body of believers that, that we're to be standing in Christ. That we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did. Up on Calvary. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Galatians 3. Go right on back to Galatians. I just want to I just want to touch that for a second. Just want to touch that for a second. Galatians 3. And I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna bounce back and forth right here, but I, I want us to see. What, what Paul is saying to the body of believers, those that have came and said they believe that Christ uh, died for their sins. They believe that, 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 that he, he was buried. They believe that he was resurrected. They believe that he, had, he took all their sins away. They say they believe that. They believe that by faith. They believe it by faith. They believe that. In, in, in Galatians 3, I'm going to bounce back and forth, but in Galatians 3, or 3, the book of Galatians, again, Paul, Apostle Paul speaking again in Galatians 3. Pay attention to what he said. Pay attention to what he said. Galatians 3. Line it right back up with the gospel. Line it right back up with the gospel. I'm going to bounce back, but I just want to show you this first, and I'm going to bounce back. But in Galatians 3, and around about the 11th verse, uh, uh, Paul says it like this. He said, but, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. Paul had told him that, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Well, you say, well, then God gave the law. God gave the law to Moses, but God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So, so I, I come by to tell you that if you're trying to keep the law, then you're not justified in the sight of God. And if you're walking around trying to uh, keep a certain law, and thinking that you're going to get you to heaven, then you're not justified by God. And it's evident. It's evident. It's evident. He said, for the just shall live by faith. That's why I come by to tell you that if you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. See, when I'm standing in Christ, I'm standing by faith. When I'm standing in Christ, then I'm standing by faith. When I'm standing in Christ, that means I'm walking in Christ. If I'm standing in Christ, that means I'm walking in Christ. And I'm walking in Christ by faith. By faith. Amen. Then he goes on to say in, 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 in 12, and he said, and the law is not of faith. My God. He said, and the law is not of faith. Paul is preaching this to the Galatian church because he was tired of seeing them going round and round and round and round because they were yet trying to mix the law up with grace. And every time you try to mix the law up with grace, it was only a, a, a situation that
God will catch you falling. Because if you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. It said, and it said, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you're going to do the law, then you got to keep every one of them. Every one of them you got to keep. Not one shall you break. If you break yet one, then you have, you have, you broke all of them. Here it is. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Pay attention. Paul going to say something real. He's going to say something right here real. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Christ was made a curse for us. Why do we want to keep bringing all this on ourselves? Come on, well, I'm going to try to do this to go to heaven. I'm going to try to do this to go to heaven. I'm going to try to be, treat people a little bit more better and I can go to heaven. Quit putting that on Christ. I'm going to trust Christ and I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to walk in Christ, then I'm going to heaven. I'm trusting the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Oh, hallelujah. I'm walking in Christ. There's nothing that I can do, oh, hallelujah, but walk in Christ. Man. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It says, Christ has redeemed us. That means he got us back. He redeemed you. When you go back and you go, I want my uh, money. I want my money back for this right here. You go in there, you redeem it. I want that back. So you're going to redeem this. See, Christ took us away from the curse. Christ took us away from the curse. God had laid his wrath upon Jesus Christ, and he took us away from the curse of the law. Why do you want to go back in bondage? Why do you want to fall from grace? Christ has done it all. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. Amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. A lot of folks want to say, well, you can't take the old law and then put the law without taking the old law. Christ is the fulfillment of the old. Christ is the promise that God promised to Abraham. He accounted uh, uh, to Abraham, uh, he counted into him righteousness because he believed that he would be the father of many nations. It was because Abraham worked, he, God promised Abraham, and Abraham believed him. God promised his son for our sins, and then when we believed that Jesus had washed away our sin, he accounted unto us as righteousness. That we believe that Christ died for our sin. We believe that he was buried for our sin. We believe that he was resurrected and we were justified by believing upon the Son of God. Come on, man. Amen. 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 Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus took the wrath of God for us. Well, what are you saying, Pastor? Well, I'm saying that, 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 that God has a salvation plan that nobody else had nothing to do with. God's salvation plan was completed when he gave his only begotten son. God didn't need no help from Moses and the law to complete his salvation plan. Well, you're talking about Moses, and I'm talking about God. God's sovereignty gave his son. He gave his son to die for sin. It wasn't anything that we did to, uh, uh, we, we didn't deserve it. He gave his son because he loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, he'll go to catch. Believe it, turn not perish. Oh, it's a catch. Oh, yeah, it's a catch. You got to believe on the son of God. You got to believe on Christ and Christ alone. Oh, it's a catch. You got to stand in Christ and nothing else. Christ don't need nothing else to help him out to give us salvation. You can't buy salvation. You can't work it out to gain salvation.
salvation. It's a gift. It was freely given by Jesus Christ. It was given by our Lord. If you're not standing in Christ, you'll fall for anything. Well, if you sow so many seeds, then you'll get this. Well, if you do so many of these, you'll get this. If you do so much of this, you're going to get to heaven. That's a lie. Once you become a born again believer, believing on Christ for salvation of Christ alone, then you're able to work. But it ain't no salvation that you're working out no more. You're walking in Christ then. You're doing just what Christ did when he was walking. You was loving. You was kind. You humble. It ain't about us. It's about Christ. Oh yeah, a lot of folks don't hear like to hear that, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Quit trying to keep the law. You can't. They wasn't, they weren't even able to keep the law. It kept them in bondage. It kept people where, where those that were sitting over them kept them in handcuffs so they could take advantage of them. And it's happening right now today that people would put you in bondage so they can take advantage of you. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. Then people are able to tell you, well, you need to do this. And you need to, if you don't do this, then you're going to hell. Well, I come to tell you, if you don't accept Christ as Savior, then yes, you will go to hell. But that's all that will send you to hell. Because he said, those who don't believe on him, it's already condemned. He said, those that don't believe on him, you're already damned. He said, those who don't believe in him, you are condemned. But the scripture is saying in Romans 8, those that are in Christ, there's no more condemnation in you. There's no more condemnation on us right now. We've been justified. Well, perhaps I wonder why I keep on falling in well. You just keep on praying. Well, Pastor, I wonder why I will keep on praying. Well, Pastor, I will just suffer a little bit longer. Well, I got to go through it. Well, Jesus had to go through it. Then we have to go through something too. He told us to bear the cross, bear our cross. We got to bear our cross too. Go to Romans 5. Go to Romans 5. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. <clears throat> pay attention to Romans Roman, uh, pay attention right quick to Romans 3 go to Romans 3 right there flip over a couple of pages Romans 3 
in Jesus, you'll fall for anything. For by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference for all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Here it is, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Man, if you're not standing in Christ, you'll fall for anything. See, he said that, that, that being justified freely. You've been set free. You've been made perfect in Christ. You're free. You're innocent. You've been justified. And it is almost like when we want to continue to keep the law, it's almost like we're locked up and we're in jail and we got handcuffs on us. And the man said, come on in, uh, brother Mike, we're going to let you go. You're free to go. You say, no, I don't want to go nowhere. Then, well, no, brother Mike, you done did your time. Uh, uh, you've been justified. The judge said, you're free. Then, no, <laughs> I want to just stay right here. I want to stay here, sir. I don't want to go nowhere, sir. I wanna... See, when every time we try to add something to the grace of God, we're telling God what you did with Christ on Calvary wasn't good enough. I just want to stay in bondage to this law. I just want to continue to try to keep this law. I got to be able to do something, sir. But God is telling you, you've been set free. My son took it out. My son bore all your sin. My son has set you free. Who the son has set free is free indeed. That ought to make you say glory, hallelujah. Oh, no, I want to stay in bondage. He justified us freely. Freely. By his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Who God has sent forth. As a perpetuation through faith in his blood, faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus, by him that believe in Jesus. That him that believe in Jesus. That means dying to self. Not being self-righteous. Not, well, I'm all this and I'm all that. No, that's no good. That who believes in Jesus, not believing in self. Because self ain't no good for salvation. It's no good for salvation. See, when, you, when you're falling in, into that bondage of self-righteousness, then you fall from grace. When, you, when you're trying to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not trusting that you're walking in it through Christ, then you fall from grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace means that you didn't do nothing to deserve it. Grace means you've done nothing uh, that you could obtain it. Grace means that God Gave it to us freely. That means that it, 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 it ain't no limit to it. Come on over to chapter 4. Pay attention to this. Pay attention. Pay attention. This is an illustration of faith. Pay attention. Chapter 4. Paul speaking to them about something that they should know because they knew the Old Testament. They, they should have known this was the Old Testament. <coughs> Paul said, what should we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found for if Abraham was justified by works, he had whereof to glory. That means if, if Abraham was justified by works, that means he had something to glory in. I did it. 
Yes, I did it. <laughs> yes, I did it. I, I, hey, I can glory in this because I, I did this. But not before God. For what had the scripture? What said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed. Pay attention, guys. Abraham believed and then God put it on his account that he was righteous. He didn't do nothing to do. He didn't do nothing to deserve. See, it said that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, to him that working, it is a reward. Not reckoned of grace. Okay, you, if you work, if you work, you get a reward. But there ain't no grace got nothing to do with that. Huh? Okay, you do all you got to do. Okay, go on and work, 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 go work all you want. It's a reward for that, but ain't grace ain't got nothing to do with it. Ain't got nothing to do with it. Because it is said in that not him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. Okay, if you work, you get paid. You go to work every week, you get paid, right? You get paid once a month, how you get paid? But grace was given to you freely. Grace is free. Grace is free. The grace of God free. It didn't cost nothing. Here it is. But to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justified the ungodly. See, that's what meant for God. Folk that don't believe that God uh, could save an old sinner like me. And they just don't believe what you mean. God saved your old ratchet behind. Yeah, and he saved your old ratchet behind too if you believe. Christ came to die for sinners. He came to die for sinners. Christ did not go up on the cross for a bunch of godless people. He went up on the cross for the ungodly. He came to die for sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if we believe in him, we shall not perish. Perish and what? Go to hell. Man, what's so hard to understand about that? Christ died for sins. Christ died for sins. People, oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord. Well, you know you love the Lord. Then that means you admitted you was a sinner, didn't you? Oh no, I don't see the Bible say everybody have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. He said, while you were yet in your sin, and I was in my sin, that he sent Christ to die for our sins. We're justified by believing what Christ did upon Calvary. We're justified because we believe that Christ took away our sins. That's why we come to Christ and admit that we were sinners. Admit that we fall short. To get the blessedness of what he did up on Calvary. Here it is. Here it is. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Our faith is counted as righteousness. Not that we're so righteous, but our faith is counted as righteousness because we're standing in Christ and not falling for anything. We're standing in Christ now. So what God says is the righteousness that's in Christ. The righteousness that is in Christ. Because he tells us to humble ourselves. Here did David say, even as David also described the blessedness of man, of the man, unto whom God imputed righteousness without work. In other words, God, by him giving his son Jesus, he imputed righteousness and we didn't have to do nothing but come and believe upon Christ as our Savior. Believe that he took our sin. Well, see, if you're standing in Christ, then you won't fall for anything. Then it says, saying, blessed are they, they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord would not impute their sins. 
Come on now, glory be to God. We thank God for that. And then on, if you go right over to chapter one, we, we, we just want to hit this justification. Here it is. Now that we believe and now that we come to Christ, now we're born again, born again believer, being believing that Christ has taken away our sin. Come on now. Chapter five in Romans said like this, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because when we were in sin, the wrath of God was against us. We were on our way to hell for the rages of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Quit taking Jesus out of it. You, you're not righteous you're not righteous just because you're righteous. A lot, of, a lot of people are all righteous. Well, how are you righteous? Well, I know I'm going to the king. Well, tell me how you're going. For one thing, that's not even humble to tell. Well, I know I, I'm doing this. I know I got this. No, tell me why. Because I'm standing in Christ. I'm able to say I have salvation because of what Christ did upon Calvary. I'm able to say that I'm saved because of what Christ did of shedding blood on Calvary. It ain't that I'm so good. It ain't that I do so good. It ain't that I pass the church. It's because of what Christ did to redeem me on Calvary. I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ now that I believe upon him. And in verse 25 it said, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification? See, Christ was delivered. And he laid down his life. He said, They didn't take his life, he gave his life. And he was given for our offenses. He was given for the sins of the world. He 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 gave his life. For the sins of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here it is. Who was delivered for our offenses. And he was raised again for our justification. He was raised again for our justification. There's nothing that we did to deserve it, guys. There's nothing that we can do to deserve it. So, so don't feel so bad about when you're going up and when you're going up. If you're a born again believer, if you believe that Christ died for your sins, if you believe that he was raised for your justification, now you are walking out your sanctification process and you'll be walking it out from the day, from this day until the Lord come back to get you. Your sanctification is a process. Saved by grace through faith in what Jesus did up on Calvary. You were justified. And then the sanctification process comes through the body of believers as you walk through this life. If you stand in Christ, he'll keep you. You got to stand in Christ. Here it is. If we were enemies, I'm over that 10th verse. He said, if, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Saved by his life. Saved by his life. See, I, the scripture is so important to the body of believers because if you're not standing in Christ, you'll fall for anything. Go with me to Galatians 4. Galatians 4. If you're not standing in Christ, you fall for anything. Galatians 4 says it like this. Around by the fourth chapter. I mean, by, the fourth, by the fourth verse, it said, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, 
Here it is, y'all. Made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. See, God sent forth his son to be born of a virgin under the law. Now, he, 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 his father is God. But he gave him a, a human mother. She was the one that uh, told him Jesus. And, uh, and, and, and she was the one that gave birth to Jesus. So he had walk in the flesh, but he still was fully divine. He was still the son of God. He was still the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Understand this now. This is why Jesus was given. God had a salvation plan for us already. He said that God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Mary was under the law, y'all. Understand this now. Mary was under the law. So in other words, Mary was under the law. That means Mary had to be saved by Jesus as well. Here it is. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption. We were adopted into the family. We were adopted through, oh man. See, it was to the Jews first under the law. But it was given to us that we were adopted unto the, un, under the adoption, and he said, of sons, and became ye sons of God, has sent forth the spirit of his son into the hearts, cried our father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then are heirs of God through Christ. Through Christ. See, Abraham was our spiritual father. So we got to understand, yeah, he was the father of many nations, but we became part of it through the spirit. He's our spiritual father. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. And he said around about John, John 1, you ain't got to go there to let you know that all the scripture would, are on point. All the scriptures are on point. The scriptures are speaking to our heart. In John 1, he said around about the 12th verse, and it said, well, I'm going to start at the 10, and it said, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. See, the promise of salvation is not just given without a simulation. You got to believe upon Jesus Christ. And ain't nobody can tell you that they're going to heaven, but they don't believe God sent his only begotten son to die for sin. If they tell you they're on the way to heaven because they've done good, they're not by the Bible. Not by works that any man should boast. If, if they can't tell you that they, that they believe that Christ died for their sins and that he was buried and was resurrected for their justification, that he arose and set on the ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God, and I believe that, and I believe it by faith that I'm saved, no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man come to the Father unless he come through Jesus. There's no other way for salvation other through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Justification came by Christ. Sanctification is standing walking in Christ. If you're not standing in Christ, then you'll fall for anything. Uh, when we find ourselves being tossed by any way of doctrine, that means we're, we're not standing in Christ. When we're easily persuaded to all these other different beliefs, then we're not standing in Christ. When we say that we believe uh, that I'm going to heaven because I pray to a, 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 a head of lettuce, then you're not in Christ. There's only one way. Jesus is the way. There's only one way to heaven, and Jesus has already paid the price. There's no other way. No other way. Not by one that no man should boast. You 
can't work out your way to heaven. Salvation was given freely. And it was given through what Christ did up on that cross. To the ones that believe. And God put in you a heart of flesh. That is willing to repent and turn. And trust Christ and Christ alone for salvation. Then, and only then, can you be justified. There is one way, and Christ is the only way. If you're not standing in Christ, you'll fall for anything. Now, this is going to sound harsh. This is going to sound harsh, but it's the truth. The word said, matter of fact, I'm going to read it to you. John 3 and 15 said that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Then the 16 said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here it is. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Well, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to go to heaven. Well, do you believe that Christ came and died for your sin? Oh, I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in you. Well, you're not on your way to heaven. You're on your way to hell. Mm. Oh, pastor, that sounds harsh. Well, I didn't say it. God said it. Come on, man. Here it is. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed. I'm reading that slow so we can hear this. He said, he that believed on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not in is condemned already. Those that would accept Christ as Savior and allow him to be Lord of your life, you have been justified. You have been justified. But those that haven't accepted Christ as Savior, you condemn. If you, if you don't believe right now that Christ died for your sins, then right now at this particular point, you are condemned. That's the word of God. Now I know we got a lot going on in the world. I know there's a lot going on in the world, but we do not want to find nobody in the condemned state. If God was to come and get him right now, I want you to be a born again believer. I want you to confess Christ as your Savior and be born again. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he wished that none shall perish. God said, I wish that none shall perish. He said, I don't want nobody to perish. That no one should perish, but have everlasting life. God don't want nobody to perish. That's why we have the preaching of the cross. That's why we have the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God gave his only begotten son to die and take away your sins. If you believe upon you, are justified. You've been made perfect in Christ. He died for the ungodly. He died for the unjust. He Took away the sins to make you whole. The gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Well, what's the gospel, pastor? The gospel is coming and admitting that you're a sinner. Come before him and admitting that you fall short. Come before him and accepting Christ as your Savior. But saying that you believe that, that he died for your sins. Believe that, that they're buried him. Believe that you got to believe that they hung him on that cross for your sin. You got to believe that when they hung him on that cross, that the wrath of God came up on Jesus. You got to believe that he took all the wrath of sin for the world. You got to believe that he was buried. And you got to believe that he stayed down in that grave. And on the 
to heaven. It's only one way. There's only one way. But you've got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Father God, I ask right now, Lord God, if it be one that is 
trying to add something else to their faith beside uh, just believing in you, oh God, I ask them to repent from it right now. Repent and turn from whatever it is that they're trying to work for for salvation. That they'll turn from it right now and just trust you and you alone. Lord God, I thank you for that opportunity to share your word today, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for taking an empty vessel and filling it with the Holy Spirit that I may speak your words, oh God. Forgive me, oh God, if I didn't speak what you wanted me to speak. For Father, I only want to please you and that which you have given me uh, 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 the right to stand and preach your unadulterated gospel. Forgive me, Lord, if I fall short in not doing what you have asked me to do, oh God. But Father God, I ask that you bless and keep each and every believer, oh God, under the sound of my voice. Bless and keep those that are still lost in the world, oh God, until they're able to hear the gospel, that they be, see, they be saved. For you said that you wish that none shall perish. So, Father God, I ask that you give a body of believers the, 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 the gumption or give them, stir up in them, oh God, uh, that they will want to go out and tell a dying world about the Savior, which is Jesus Christ. Stir up in us, oh God, that we'll be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. That we will speak the word, speak the truth in love. Father God, I pray for your strength in this, this world that we're living in right now. I pray that you give us strength, Lord God, to, to take the gospel around the world. Give us strength, Lord God, to reach those that are not saved. Bless and keep those that are saved. Bless and keep those, Lord God, who, who don't know you from the part of their sin. Father God, we thank you right now for life. We thank you for life and holiness. We thank you, O oh God, for your son Jesus. Yeah. We thank you for that blood that was shed up on camera for our sins. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy and grace that you allow us right now, O oh God, to still stand right here, O oh God. But, Father, even more, we thank you for that place that you have prepared for us already, O oh God. For, the, for your word said to be absent from the bodies to be present in the Lord. Father God, do you say to live in Christ and to die is gain? So, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we're still here, but Lord God. But we thank you even more for that house that you've already prepared for us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the coming of Christ, Lord God. To, to take us back with you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you continue to put in us a praying heart, O oh God. Thank you. And Father, we just bless you right now. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. For it's because of you that we live, move, and have our better existence. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. May the grace of God keep you and the love of Jesus continue to be in you. And the Holy Spirit guide and lead you. And the church say, Amen. Amen, amen and amen.